We have Jeremy in the wings. All right, we'll bring him on. Jeremy Rusco, the new owner of the formerly known Emporia Country Club. Jeremy, thank you so much for taking the time to join us tonight. Bro to Yuli, thanks for having me on. Looking forward to it. Of course. I have to say this, uh, the news of this breaking definitely caught my eye. I have seen, you know, pros going out and buying land or taking part in like making their own home course somewhere here. But I've, I, I haven't seen someone buy a, an actual country club before. And, and that, that's a big, I mean, that's a big, big purchase with a lot of land, a lot of maintenance and everything. So I have tons of questions, but I guess my first one is like, how did this come about? Like, what was the, uh, the, the beginning starting of this? Uh, well, a little over a year ago, um, not more than that, but the, the country club has, um, as a lot of people are probably aware, the country club model is, uh, doesn't really work all that well in, in smaller, you know, rural communities like Emporia, 25,000, a little bit larger than that. Um, the financials, you know, Stability of a country club just doesn't doesn't seem to make sense. And so uh, last year, the a little over a year ago, the club actually went up for sale. Um, I actually there was only two interested parties at the time, and uh, the old shareholders and the old money, I guess you could say, um, you know, they had their group, and then it was it, it was me and the. I guess you could say the old money wanted to stick with the old money, and um, <laughs> so you tried it. You tried to buy it a couple years ago, correct? Back in twenty twenty two. Okay. Well, a, a year ago, um, the end of twenty twenty two. Yep. Okay. And uh, and that was okay. I had a lot going on with the you know the house of discs, um, you know dynamic discs merger acquisition, and uh, the timing just wasn't right. So it was certainly. Um, okay with that. And I knew that they were going to, or at least they said they were going to put some more effort into, you know, the, the facility and the, and the disc golf course and the golf course. And a year later, uh, <laughs> here we are. And, um, I'm, uh, I'm excited about, you know, what we've been able to accomplish there and where we're, uh, where we're going with things. So, um, they, they approached me in October about, um, you know, that the property was likely not likely it was going to go up for sale, um, they wanted to know if I was interested in purchasing, uh, it, I actually kind of at the time had said, you know what, I, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure the timing is right for me just yet. And, um, they approached me again a little bit later and then, you know, and of course the intention is to keep things in Emporia because, if you have somebody from outside Emporia that acquires the property, it's probably not going to remain a disc golf course, not going to remain a, a traditional golf course and probably going to become a housing, housing development. And so, um, anyway, at one point they said, Hey, if you don't put an offer in by you know the end of the week, just want you to know that it is going to go to the, to the market. And, uh, it's likely that it's going to sell to somebody outside of Emporia. And so I ended up putting an offer in and here we are today. So, did you get a better deal than your previous offer back in 2022? <laughs> you know, you, <laughs> you would think that uh, that would be the case. Um, unfortunately, it was not the case. Um, the pickleball courts, little... they're like, hey, we got pickleball courts now. This is, we got it. We got upcharge for this now. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm a little, yeah, a little disappointed in the way that, uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the short term turnaround um, that uh, they were able to make a pretty substantial, you know, profit on, but um, it's, you know, everything happens for a reason and um, it's uh, here we are. So, so what's your plan moving forward? Do you, because obviously you, do you, do you swing the sticks or do you plan on like keep, <laughs> keeping that growing and, and uh, keeping it a traditional golf course or do you want to make it a full-time disc golf destination course or like what are your plans kind of moving forward with that where do you want it to go yuli you tell me <laughs> <laughs> me that's oh, why you man. came on here is to get yeah. our ideas yeah. <laughs> looks like you might be looking for some investors brody <laughs> <laughs> i want this golf man yeah 
You want disc golf? Yeah, I, I want disc golf. Cut it in half. Make no, a really hey, nice country club golf course. The other half, really nice disc golf course. How about that? Well, it's definitely not remaining a you know a members only country club facility. The emphasis is going to be uh, more on disc golf. Obviously, 113 years ago, when the country club was established and the course was made, it was solely focused on you know traditional ball golf. And when we uh, you know had our first disc golf tournament out there in 2012, um, you know we were working around. The, the, the golf course and, you know, and, and ultimately even today we still, you know, yeah. coexist with the golf course. We, we follow the, you know, the way that the course flows for traditional golf. And I think it's a really pretty, pretty sound course in the way that the two can coexist together. All that being said, um, you know, disc golf has still been a much more secondary focus there at the, at the at the facility or not really much of a focus at all until it's you know more tournament time and uh, absolutely going to put more emphasis and focus on disc golf i think there's uh, a lot to a lot to accomplish there and certainly when the disc golf pro tour comes to town when you guys come to town you know it's a, it's a big deal for emporia it's a big deal for dynamic discs it's a big deal for house of discs and i absolutely look forward to making sure that we continue to make that course better every year. I think we have over the last you know decade and every year, we certainly make improvements. We, we take the feedback that, that you guys provide. We, we make changes to the course. And I know there's some criticism about the way the course is, but um, when you really try to think about the way that everything comes together uh, in terms of spectating, in terms of the player experience, in terms of the media, you know, there's a lot that goes into um, having a successful disc golf event at the highest level. And I think that the, the current property there, the current facility, while it's not perfect, it's it's one of the better facilities that's, that's out there um, on the disc golf pro tour, uh, PDJ major swing today. Is this going to be the first time we actually see a disc golf basket in the middle of a traditional golf green. <laughs> this is going to be the first time that we see that. I've, I've, I've always wanted to just take a spike hyzer right into the green on purpose. <laughs> you know, uh, so I was actually thinking about that. Like, you know, what if there was, what if we did it that way? And if you did a spike hyzer, into the green and you, you know, you, you tombstoned it, whatever, you know, however you want to say it, is that a one stroke penalty? Um, right now it is right now it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you definitely by owning it and being, cause I've always had the idea or the notion of this analogy of where disc golfers at golf courses, we kind of, we kind of feel like we're the, um, the scooter kids at, at a skate park yeah. of where technically, yes, the sign does say we're allowed to be there, but the majority of people there are on skateboards and they definitely shun or don't like the scooter kids. And I've, I've felt that way at, um, go Hill out in California. I feel that way out here in Las Vegas. And I'd certainly felt that way also at the Emporia country club or what was the Emporia country club of where, yeah, yeah, we'll take your money and yeah, Mm -hmm. you can play disc golf here, but you are definitely, you know, peasants compared to the golfers. And even from the golfers there, it's, it's a, it's a headbutting thing. So how are you going to tackle that? If you are going to try to keep it um, a golf course and a disc golf course, how are you going to kind of tackle where these two groups don't really like each other <laughs> well thankfully in emporia disc golf and disc golfers even though you know maybe had some mixed you know feelings and emotions in the past um the two you know disc golf is obviously very well um received in emporia and very you know i'd, I'd say the community opens uh, welcomes disc golfers with with open arms and is excited to have the disc golf community um, you know, the disc golf circus come to Emporia for the week. Uh, I, I would say it's pretty, pretty, you know, basic in the sense that um, I'm pretty optimistic that under the new ownership, there's going to be more passionate disc golfers that are amongst the staff at the facility um, at what is now being called Champions Landing, which maybe we can talk about here in a little yeah. bit. But, um, you know, I certainly expect that the people who are maintaining the course are 
I have a pretty good feeling that there's going to be some passionate disc golfers that are amongst that crew. The staff that's inside at the restaurant, bar and grill is probably going to be a stronger mix of disc golfers. Um, and just the dynamics in itself at the, you know, at the property is, is certainly going to change where it's been, it really has been more of a members only country club type of a vibe. Um, every year the membership has been going down and, um, Ultimately, that doesn't work anymore, and it is going to be more more inviting. Uh, announcing tomorrow that, um, and it's been pay to play. It's the only course in Emporia that is pay to play, uh, and, and it's been a pretty. I think they raised the rate to twenty five dollars a round in Emporia. That's quite a bit of money, and um, uh, all that being said, I would say that it's it's absolutely worth that. But I'm going to bring those rates down to a more, um, we'll say, a reasonable disc golf rate. Uh, going to have some free disc golf nights for the month of February. Disc golf is going to be free out at uh, out at the uh, on, on on the course, and there's going to be more uh, league nights, more events, more things to engage with the disc golf community, and certainly make sure that they're welcome uh, inside and outside the facility. Are you going to make the country club a public uh, traditional golf course? I uh, don't have the crystal clear plan, but ultimately, yes, it's uh, nice. um, that's, you know, there's with the membership going away um, and there's just so many, you know, it's a great location. There's a lot of people that are around the area and um, to get more activity to make it more financially sustainable. I think we need to be more inviting and more welcoming to the entire community. So with that, with that being said, do you plan on, um, even doing renovations for uh, traditional golf as well? Or do you um, plan on just kind of keeping it the same? Or There's uh, – you guys probably don't have enough time to uh, talk about everything with, uh, with what's, in, what's you know, potentially going to happen, but there is some substantial um, state of Kansas um, tourism and entertainment uh, – Grant money, um, bond okay, money nice. that can be can be awarded to you know something that's going to uh, be a tourism and entertainment uh, draw for you know our our area and obviously disc golf is certainly a tourism and entertainment draw. We got this you know data already about how you know many people come in not just for the for the one or two tournaments of the year but for year round. I mean almost on the outside of the winter every day there's people that are coming to Emporia playing the disc golf courses, touring the dynamic discs, you know, facilities, going to the retail store, the pro shop, um, shopping, staying in hotels, eating in the restaurants, enjoying the, you know, the disc golf experience and everything that Emporia has to offer. And so uh, there's more than that um, to, to go to the, uh, you know, to the property. I absolutely want to add an indoor pickleball facility. Um, we've got the six outdoor pickleball courts that are already there and uh indoor pickleball facility as well as you know multi-sports complex i think would absolutely um, help things out we've got a music festival in town that um, is, is is a growing music festival and i expect that that's going to um, start to migrate from downtown emporia to uh, the facility there and hopefully in the long run um, maybe not really the long run i'll find out I actually go to um topeka to uh uh meet with the uh, Department of Commerce um, on Thursday, I guess, about uh, about this. And I'm very optimistic that uh, we are going to be a prime candidate and approved for this state funding to really make a transformational change and um, change the whole entire property. Wow. Because I think the biggest issue that the people that have, you know, I guess that people that just don't like watching disc golf on golf courses, I think the biggest issue is literally just the look of it because as a player playing it, I actually prefer playing on those type of courses because you can really adjust how the OB lines work. You can adjust a lot. I think it's better for the fans too. Cause I mean, worlds this year at new London, I love the course. It's an incredible course. Very, it's a very wooded, awesome course. There's only going to be a couple people being able to watch it. That's it. There, yeah. You're not going to be able to have thousands of people watching you throw the tee shot on hole one. So I think what Yuli was trying to say too, with the court mate, the course maintenance is, is there going to be something like on hole one 
are we going to see the fairway shaped and the grass length change for disc golf? So now when I look at it, I'm like, this is a sick looking disc golf hole where the OB grass is higher. The fairway is lower and it's, it's appealing to the eye and it looks good versus we're playing where it's like the road over here is OB the sidewalk, uh, the, the cart path over here is OB, but then there's different lengths of grass, but that's still in bounds. Like, are we going to be able to see a kind of a transformation in the grass length where bunkers are placed, where greens are going to be, that's going to suit disc golf more than golf? Uh, yeah, I absolutely think so. And, you know, now that we're going to have more freedom at the, you know, at the property, I uh, certainly look forward to the feedback that we get. Part of that's going to be implemented this year and just, you know, a couple months, but um, I'd love for, you know, Brody, since you like playing on golf courses and I appreciate that by the way. And I actually, I really do think in terms of the growth of the sport, having a, you know, these high level events played on or a facility that's set up specifically for disc golf is really important to accommodate you know, I think at Worlds in 2022, when we hosted the Professional World Championships, I think we had a little over 3,000 spectators. That's not easy to, you know, facilitate at a lot of the disc golf courses um, that are out there. And I think having a good spectating base is is a pretty important component to the growth of the sport, the excitement of what's going on. And, and you know, it's 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 really um, just something that uh, you, you, you can't get in those tight wooded courses, even though they're fun to play even though it, it brings out a different skill set and maybe caters to different players that don't throw as, you know, the, the max distance. Um, it, uh, yeah, I think, I think the, the golf course is, is really important. And I think that over time there will be less criticism to, um, to how that is being done. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And any, and, any, and, and, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, I, I really do, you know, thinking about things now looking forward where, you know, it doesn't have to be just, you know, the golf course is the golf course and you can't really change the golf course. I really do look forward to seeing, you know, the different things that we can do to, um, your point of having taller grass in certain areas, have different, um, you know, obstacles, variables out of bounds, lies out of bounds lines. Those sorts of things are going to be, I think, pretty important to, um, the course continuing to evolve, to keep up with, the growing demands of um, you know, the highest level players like you guys. Yeah. And I'm sure it gives you so much more land to um, design better holes. I mean, different shots. I, f I feel like when you have, uh, when you have to navigate the golf course in such a way to make sure that everything flows together, having the freedom of owning the property and being like, okay, this weekend we're putting in these holes, there's no golf and you're able to actually use the land for disc golf. I can't imagine all the ideas, especially having a great course designer like Eric over there. I can't imagine his, his wheels turning right now and getting excited to, you know, really get the whole potential of the entire property. He was actually out there today. Um, and you know, I know that his mind and we talked about it, it's in a different state of mind now, you know, it's not just working within a, a smaller, you know, uh, set of restraints. He's got way more freedom or ultimate freedom in, in most regards. So yeah, I look forward to seeing the changes that we're able to make. You mentioned the new name and I want to touch on this a little bit champions landing. Uh, can you, you know, expand a little bit on where, where this name came from, why, why it came about? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, it was actually the, uh, the, the general manager that's been at the, at the facility for 18, he had a couple, you know, the, the country club name and they, and when the new ownership purchased it, they changed it to Emporia community club and, club just doesn't work in Emporia. It makes people not feel welcome because you have to be part of the club to, you know, get inside the, get inside the gates, inside the facility, use the, use the golf course, use the disc golf course. And that's, that's not where, you know, we're, we're going to, that's just not where that's going to be at. And so the, uh, the general manager, Chris Herrig over there, he had a couple name suggestions. Champions landing was one of them. I was like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. And when I thought about it, we crown, we've crowned, uh, maybe should put, pull out. I mean, 
We've crowned a lot of PDGA, junior world champions, amateur world champions, masters world champions, professional world champions. This year we're hosting the masters world championship. Next year we're hosting the junior world championship. There's been you know, 113 years of uh, you know city golf champions crowned at the um, at the property, and uh, I think I just thought that name was very fitting. And as we continue to have more world championships in Emporia for disc golf, I think Champions Landing is a really uh, fitting name for the property. And I was actually kind of surprised that uh, there's not another golf course that I found that was named Champions Landing or something. Yeah, I played like I that played that at a lot of courses land. with Champions in it. I've played a lot of courses with Landing, but I don't think I've ever played. The no. Champions Landing course. I love, I love the name. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. Um, all right, so Appreciate first, that. first, want to say, you know, I think for, uh, for disc golf to continue to grow, I think people have to take risk because obviously this is a massive risk. Take, uh, you know, taking on this massive project here, things like this have to happen to kind of set the future or the path of where maybe disc golf is going to go in 10, 20, 15 years from now. But I do want to push back just a little bit because in the uh, Emporia Gazette, uh, you had the quote saying champions landing was solidify Emporia as the disc golf capital of the world and disc golf destination for decades to come. When you go to Emporia, you definitely feel like, holy cow, like disc golf is a lot of a bigger deal here than in other states in the United States, in the other cities yeah. in the United States. But one thing that is a, a little bit of a concern to me is the tournament. I can't remember what year it was, but it might have even been last year. One of the tournaments there, you guys decided not to hold the AM tournament on the same weekend as the professional tournament and the attendance was a massive dip for like, just for mm. me seeing the crowds and stuff, uh, it was and people kind of had photos of like, Hey, this is what it looked like last year, final round lead card. This is what it looks like this year. So I guess for the people, the naysayers or whatever out there saying like, no, Emporia is never going to be a destination spot. No one's going to be driving into Emporia. No one's going to fly into Emporia. What are you going to do differently at Champions Landing? Because we've seen it not really work at Eagles Crossing, right? Eagles Crossing, everyone's talking about it. This course is the course of the future. I haven't heard anyone talk about it. I haven't heard anyone go out there and play it. And it's an incredible course. It's just in the middle of nowhere. So what's going to set Champions Landing apart from all the other courses that are going to basically have people flock into play to watch the tournaments and all that? You got enough time for this answer? Yeah. Hey, the <laughs> chat, the chat loves this. Trust me. The chat loves this. Everyone, when, when no one is chatting, when no one is saying anything, that's when I know everyone's listening. So yeah, we, everyone, everyone's dialed in to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Uh, hey, and I appreciate the question. And I do know there's some, you know, certain criticism around uh, Emporia being a, a great disc golf location or a great disc golf destination. And I would say that we are uh, not in the middle of nowhere. You know, we're not a metropolitan area, but um, where we are um, not that, you know, we're an hour 15 from the Wichita airport, an hour, a little over an hour and a half from the Kansas City airport, center of the country, easy to get to people passing by all the time from the two interstates that are uh, that are, you know, they go right through Emporia. And I think the, uh, well, UDISC named Emporia, the number one small town disc golf, small town for disc golf, um, you know, in the United States or in the world a couple of years ago. And that was not just like, they just, you know, threw the dart at the dartboard and, and picked Emporia. That was based on, uh, you know, user generated data from the feedback from the, you know, Ratings. I don't know all the specifics around that, but uh, you know, when you come to Emporia as a disc golfer, you feel welcome. Most people at restaurants, most people in you know in, in the stores, when they see somebody wearing something disc golf, they talk to them. You know, they talk to the it's, to the person. It's the that's only there. place I've is, ever gotten a discount or uh, at, for food. <laughs> Planet shout out to Planet Subs. <laughs> I think they give like 10% <laughs> off for disc golfers that, I mean, that, that does make you feel like, Oh wow. Okay. This is kind of cool. Uh, and that's the only place that's ever mm -hmm. happened to me. Yeah. Um, we got disc golf baskets at almost every, every school, the senior citizen, you know, centers, um, 
fraternities, sororities, their local restaurants, local businesses, hotels, disc golf baskets are, are everywhere in Emporia. Um, I think the number of courses that we have in such a, you know, literally like a five minute proximity or 10 minute proximity from um, I the center of town is, is pretty incredible. And while they're, you know, not the number one or number two or, you know, top 10 courses on most people's list, there's a lot of really quality courses in such a, such a small area. You get to come to the Dynamic Discs Pro Shop. You get to come to the Dynamic Discs Headquarters building. You get a tour of the facility. You get to stamp a disc. You get to see the museum. Um, now inside of House of Discs, there's even more brands. Uh, underneath of the umbrella, so even more of an experience when you come to Emporia. I'm hopeful that we'll have manufacturing in Emporia at some point. Um, how much more time do I have to keep talking on this, Brody? No, you're no, you're good. Yeah, no, I think <laughs> I, I think uh, you know when it goes to like destinations, right? Coming from a golfer, back when I wasn't nearly as busy as I am now. I would go on these golf trips with my boys every year. And I mean, when, when it, when it came season to start trying to figure out where we were going to go, I mean, it was flooded with ideas of like Northwest Florida, Northeast, let's go to Hawaii. Let's go international. Let's go to, I, it was flooded with all sorts of ideas. The only one that really ever like pops up that I hear people talk about a lot is Rock Hill USCGC, which that course is not, the same course as when yeah. we play it and then Maple Hill, right? Like those are the two courses that I hear when, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm doing a guy's trip. We're going to go up, play some disc golf. I guess like what is, what is going to make Emporia? What is going to make champions landing in that conversation of like, Oh, this is where we're going next summer. We're going to go out and play uh, champions landing. Well, maybe the, I mean, there people are coming all the time to Emporia. The amount of tours that we give at, you know, the Dynamic Disc headquarters building is absolutely incredible. I can't believe the number of people that come almost every day outside of, outside of the winter that come to Emporia. And so um, I think it's just the fact that, you know, those, what you're hearing about those uh, Maple Hill, those, those Rock Hill, those destination places, uh, people are, um, it's maybe easier to talk about on social media and gets maybe in the news feed a little bit, little bit more, but, um, the, the actual number of people that come to Emporia, um, for disc golf and to enjoy, you know, everything that we have in Emporia is it's, it's really a pretty incredible number looking at the UDISC reports on how many people come from, uh, the different States. How, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah. And. Yeah, I have a little pushback with that, Brody, because I've I've definitely heard of so many people saying we're making a trip to Emporia to go play all those different courses with without a doubt. But I it might be but, because I'm yeah. I'm from Texas and it's a lot closer and they want to go <laughs> they want to fly somewhere and make it more of a trip than like a road trip. That might be it. Um, so I, I but, could, I could definitely stand corrected on, on that statement for sure. I would say that it's definitely a, I would say a top five destination for especially amateurs to go somewhere, um, and play there. But I do want to go back to the question that you had Brody of, um, which I, I feel like is a great question of, so we did see a, a downward, um, drop at the last tournament, as far as spectators hmm. this year coming up, um, do you guys have plans to, to run more am tournaments or to be a, a little bit more inviting to grab those people to come in? Because I feel like that's definitely an issue that we all, that we all, um, we're sad about too, because we love playing in front of those big crowds. Right. Yeah. And Brody, I appreciate it. I, I apologize for not answering that earlier. And you oh, no, you're good. I'm glad that you brought that back up because, um, I was a little bit worried about that as well last year. Obviously, we we saw what we saw. The, the spectator base was was not there like we uh, had hoped, and we are absolutely combining the Disc Golf Pro Tour Dynamic Disc Open with the uh, Amateur Dynamic Disc Open this year as well to make sure that we bring in more amateur players. It's going to be more of that festival-like atmosphere that people have been familiar with, with, you know, the old glass blown open days, um, as well as when we had the dynamic discs open be am and pro, um, we are focusing on Emporia only for, for this year, um, to make sure that everybody is 
rock solid right here in Emporia. The amateurs are going to play on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Pros are going to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So that, you know, certainly expect that 80, 90% of the AMs will stick around to spectate um, on that final championship Sunday out at the, out at Champions Landing um, with some of the improvements that happen out there. And um, yeah, I'm, you know, I think it's an important piece to have the amateurs um, as a part of the event. I would love to have like every couple of years, maybe every five years, we kind of bring back the, the big show of sorts where, you know, kind of the glass blown open um, when we had 1500, 1600 competitors in the heyday of, of that. But um, it's, it's a lot to the, the part of it is it's so challenging as an organization to run a disc golf pro tour elite series event or a PDGA major, you know, every year, the, the requirements to make that be what it needs to be to, to put on the, um, you know, such a high quality event really pulls a lot of resources, a lot of staff, um, a lot of volunteers. And when you have, you know, multiple other courses that are, you're trying to put on a good amateur experience, it's, it's hard to do, um, but we're going to do it this year. And we can't wait to see everybody in Emporia for the dynamic is open. Yeah, well, I will be there. I'll be very excited to kind of see what changes uh, you guys are making in the next couple months. I know it's going to be very busy for sure. And I'm, I'm 100% on board too. I know there are some pros that push back with like, why are there AMs out here? There was some pushback when we did uh, out at OTB Open. No, OTB, sorry, Portland Open. They shut down one of the courses and the pros could only practice one of the courses while the other course was available for purchase for amateurs to come out and play, which helped increase costs or I guess reduce the cost from the Disc Golf Pro Tour of renting out all the golf courses out there. I think right now with where disc golf is, like, I think that's essential. I think you have to marry these things together. And the idea of like, oh, I'm just going to run a disc golf course uh, tournament by myself and nothing else. I think that only works in certain communities, in certain spots right now. And until you kind of build it up to where you have 3,000, 4,000 people that will show up to your tournament and not have to play disc golf or have any skin in the game. Uh, I think you have to do it this way. Cause I know for a fact, people will travel from Texas to Kansas to play in the tournament and then watch the tournament on yeah. Sunday. And, and a lot of them too come out after the rounds, they'll walk 36 holes. They'll play yeah. in the morning and then come out and watch, walk another 18. So, um, and I know going off of what Yuli said, you know, this, this works for us too. Like we like playing in front of fans as well. And, uh, that's what we want to see. So Yuli, did you have something else? No, that was it. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I know you're a busy person. We really do appreciate you taking the time of coming on. We wish you all the best. And uh, I look forward to playing my first round at champions landing soon. So thank you so much. You guys much. better have at least one hole where we can throw spike <laughs> eyes into that green. I'll bring a big divot, a big divot uh, fixer. <laughs> I mean, well, well so what about this? What about this? What about on Monday? We do the ball golf disc golf challenge and spike hyzers are allowed Ooh. on one hole. All right, I'm down. Yes, I'm Into in. The green. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and think about this. So whole disc golf hole one. What if you did we'll say traditional golf, ball golf off the tee, mm -hmm. and then you threw a disc uh, from there, spike hyzer onto the green like you want. And then you putt from your divot. I mean, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. I'm in. All, all I'll say is any of those houses on the right side of that street, if we, <laughs> if we have a bunch of people hitting tee shots off there, beware. The slice <laughs> is coming to play. So, all right. Thanks so much, Jeremy, Thanks, for coming on. Good luck appreciate on Thursday, it. too, uh, with your meeting up there as well. And we appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thanks, guys.